I'd like for us to discuss something Michelle has written quite a bit about, and that has to do with debt. We talked about it earlier. And curious, Michelle, if the pandemic will change our view of debt and how we use it. I hope so. Um, I am not a fan of debt. I always joke that if debt was a person, I'd slap it. Uh, and now I say that because as soon as I say that, they're, they're intellectuals and econo economists and people are like, does this girl understand about leverage and, you know, and so forth? And I understand that many people can't afford a home without borrowing. But what I think I would like people to embrace is that the less debt we have, the more ability we have to weather storms and the storms will always come. My grandmother used to say, you need a rainy day fund because it's always gonna rain. And in, when it rains, you wanna have an umbrella. And in my case, you don't wanna have to be out in the open with debt. Uh, and so I, I do hope that, that you know, we learn, when we learn lessons from these type of things that people realize, like for example, I am not gonna retire with a mortgage. Absolutely will not. And, and if you don't have a mortgage right now in this economy, you are feeling, you are breathing and sleeping a lot better. For me personally, and what I see around me and what I've tried to teach my kids is debt is the enemy. I mean, yeah, there are ways to leverage it and use it exciting, but I don't think the average American thinks that way or can think that way because they're just trying to keep themselves out of debt. And I think a lot of that comes from credit card debt. And I mean, take your credit cards, throw them away. You don't need them, especially right now when all you need is your phone and, and Apple Pay. I, I totally agree about um, getting rid of debt. And I'm, I see the, the accumulation of global debt as a massive issue that is, is still hasn't really blown up, but it will. And mm -hmm. I, I totally agree with Michelle. And I also think that a lot of the debt comes from the combination of you know, lame regulations that we're still living with things that were laid down 80, 90 years ago that we need to re-examine, for example, around sort of zoning and, and housing construction, um, but also status seeking, right? Like we need the bigger house and the bigger car. And I think we need to sort of educate ourselves to say, well, actually, no, I need to retire with no mortgage. I always like to say that for me personally, I look at it like it's good debt, bad debt. Good debt, is anything that is going to fund an investment in your life, it's gonna go up in value. Bad debt, I think of as anything that you eat or that you're gonna throw away or clothing you're gonna wear and it's gonna be or gone. Dry. Why would you be paying for that, you know, five years after the fact? I want you not to say that anymore. So, um, good <laughs> debt, bad debt. I want you to just take that out of your lexicon. So let me ask you this, the good debt, the mortgage, you know, things that were assets that might appreciate. So when you go pay, do you have a mortgage, Pam? Just Yes. You know, Okay, so when you go pay your mortgage, which would be in the good debt category, do you feel like joyful? Do you like skip to the bank? Yes, I'm so happy I can pay you. Because that's the definition of good, right? So I try to not say that at all because when we say that, it um, brings down people's barriers because they okay. feel like, good point. Oh, good this point. is really okay to have all this mortgage debt because this is good. So I never say there's good debt. There's only there's no good debt or bad debt. There's only debt, which is okay. Bad. So why don't we say it this way? There's bad debt, and then there's really bad debt. Because you're <laughs> right. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not thrilled when I see the payment come out of my bank account every month. It doesn't. But you know. So there's bad, and then there's really bad. Bob, our words so. matter. What we tell ourselves, yes. and and in the yes. finance and the personal finance space. One of the things that you have to do is get people into a certain headspace so that they can make better decisions. So if I say all debt is bad, when you go to get the mortgage or the car loan, or maybe you think you have to borrow for, for school, you will have this, this, this feel like this weight on your shoulder. You're like, okay, I'm only gonna put a 10 pound on my shoulder as, as opposed to two 20 pound weights. And that's why I try to get people to change their language around these things like debt and home ownership and all this kind of stuff. We have to do stuff because because it does because you you have to be black and white, if I can use that term, on some things to get people to the middle. I have hope for the future of our young Americans who are entering the workforce today or or leaving college. Um, in the case of my sons. All of them know their credit scores and all of them know what needs to be done in order to improve their credit scores. Mm -hmm. In fact, they have even told me, for instance, that in some cases they can't make it any higher because they don't have a credit history long enough to impact the credit score. 
Right. So I can tell you at age 25, I just knew that I had a credit card and didn't know that there was a score attached to it. But, you know, you know, yeah. fast forward yeah. and my children know more about credit and debt than I ever did at the same age. They also don't think home ownership is the be all end all the way my yeah. generation did. And they look at it differently. All right. So in your life, your money, as we mentioned, we're encouraging you, our viewers, to submit questions to pose to our experts. So here's one. My son's 27. He has student loan debt. He has a job, but no 401k, no employer sponsored retirement plan. So here's the question. Is it better for him to pay down his debt really aggressively mm -hmm. or pay the minimum and then save whatever he can and, and invest it in a Roth IRA? I want to direct this to Michelle because it's right in your wheelhouse, Michelle. <laughs> We already know the answer. <laughs> oh, you all know the answer. Everybody's listening knows the answer. Pay off the debt, absolutely. Um, because when we talk about the end of retirement, we talk about the 20, 30 years. Well, this hurt this kid, this young adult, has decades to save for retirement. And what often happens is they carry that student loan debt, then maybe something happens, they put it on deferral, and then it builds up. So pay that debt off. They have time. And hopefully he can live at home or with a relative or with the 10 roommates he had in college so that more of the income is devoted to the debt and then can get out of debt quickly. So we're not talking about a decade. You know, you could you throw all the money of it. We're talking a couple years. Um, so absolutely, I would say wait on the retirement and get rid of that debt. Michelle, what is so great about you is that you actually answer a question. <laughs> you know, you don't talk around it. You go right straight to it. So we always like to take a look at the lighter side of money. So I was perusing online the other day and came across a very interesting fact. Did you know that $1 bill weighs a gram and that 454 bills equal one pound? And then did you know that Americans have an average personal debt of about $90,460? So Bob, I think it works out to about 200 pounds of debt that you're carrying. Yeah. So, you know, when I think about like losing weight, maybe I can start thinking about it in terms of how much debt I might be losing. If I lose 15 pounds, I haven't done the math yet, but I'm sure we can figure out how many dollars of debt that equals, right? Brilliant. I'm on board with it. <laughs>